the name of your studio site is an abbreviation that stands for sculpture in the environment is this how you still see the intention of your work well uh, the, the it's funny because we start out with that idea because it was, I, I was doing sort of public art and then I realized that you know just doing objects you know like everybody does objects I mean all the architects still do they do the building is sitting on a pedestal and around it is sort of irrelevant and all the sculpture was done that way too you know, have a building and a plaza and a slab and you put a Henry Moore in front of the building so all of that that concept of integration and fusion of ideas and narrative and almost everything got blown out the window uh, with the kind of industrial age uh, you know I've been fascinated by materials and tools and stuff so it's like everything else everything you get you've heard all your life you eventually get tired of and you said there's got to, got to be a different way you know there's got to be something else so when the site started it, you know the, the word that was you know applied to what I was doing at that time was sculpture and then as we got into it I began to we sort of lost that we just began just calling it site you know by being on the site or well the site became important the context became important and you know we quickly realized that you know you you, you really the more you include the more interesting it gets and uh, so that was the so more you include whatever of whatever's you. around it, it and, be, and, and it around be, you yeah, is well, architecture right yeah, so well, that's well, it's around it can be lots of things okay. you know sometimes it's or physical nature. sometimes it's nature sometimes mm -hmm. it's psychological sometimes it's information i mean with the early buildings you know it's very funny it's just like everybody's rediscovered these best buildings again in the last year well literally every day i get some requests from somebody who wants to you do something with them, you know, reinterpret them. Did you try in every store to uh, emphasize a particular critique? Well, all of them. I think I, can't, I would say almost all of my work has, has come somewhere doing something with the process of construction, They're doing something with either inverting it or exaggerating or changing it or doing something with the process of, of, of building. I've always thought that, that was always more interesting than the finished building. That was, it's kind of a commonplace thing. Like, you know, every time I saw something half built or taking it down or moving it or whatever, I always thought that process was far more interesting than the finished product. So all of them were about taking things apart or removing them or making jigsaw puzzles or making, uh, you know, nature out of them or doing something, some inversion or some attack on An architecture. Attack. Yeah. Okay. An attack on architecture, yeah. Attack and architecture. Yeah. <laughs> that's a good title. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It is. It is. It was. But that's why it was so controversial. We got, you know, when we first started getting a lot of publicity, I remember it's just architecture magazines used to go berserk. You know, one would publish and then the next issue would always have these outraged architects cancel my subscription. You know, they would. <laughs> Well, it made, it made a lot of professionals upset, right? Oh, incredibly. But I was very surprised, actually, the degree. And I thought that, well, it's interesting because... Because I a lot thought, of well, architects probably think of architecture as a craft. Oh, as yeah, a, as a craft, or as formalism, a formal, or it's sacred, yeah. or function, or it's but duty, rules, or... Very particular rules. Yeah, yeah, it always has a very special role. But, you know, but when, when you think of, of architecture, like become, you know, architecture lead, what, what's it called? AIA. Yeah. Um, architecture Institute of America. Um, that's very recent. Come on, a couple hundred years didn't exist. Yeah. Now, suddenly came along, and then some people decide, if you're not one of us, you're not one of us. It's crazy, because... What, what's that? Tell me that beautiful quote of Max Protect. Oh, yeah, it's very funny, yeah. Because, uh, well, after I started doing buildings, everybody just said, you're an architect, you know. And, uh, you know, I, I didn't study architecture, but I, I knew a lot about it because when I was a kid, actually, my father was an engineer, so he got all his sons to help him build houses. And then he would sell them in the summer houses. And he would sell them in the winter, and then you'd build another summer house. And he would sell it in the winter to build another one. So we had a lot of experience in building. I mean, I knew more about how to build and all the tools and the materials and construction and tensions. And when I was 14 years old, and most architects know when they get out of design school. So I knew a lot already. And I have lots of pictures of doing sculpture, very complicated structural ways of making things. So I had that instinct always. But uh, it is funny that, you know, the AIA is licensed, you know, you're 
So you're not licensed? No, I'm not licensed. And the only place I've ever, I've worked in, you know, 11 countries, and only <laughs> place in the world has ever asked me any questions or even... Here. Is here. In, oh, in, in the USA. In America. <laughs> the only place I've ever, ever been asked. Speaking about your drawings, you said, I consider drawing more as a way of exploring the physical and psychological state of inclusion, suggesting that buildings can be fragmentary and ambiguous as, as opposed to conventionally functional and determinate. So I'm very interested in this idea uh, that buildings can be fragmentary and ambiguous. What was, what was it initially that triggered your interest in this direction? Well, I think almost everything has come from this sort of like what else could it be? You know, we know what it can be. Anyway, the, the funny thing is that I, I look at, you know, so much sculptural architecture, and I, I've never really liked it that much because I started as a sculptor doing all kinds of sculptural shapes. So I said, well, I got over that. Now, why don't these people get over that, that, that period? Because that's, you know, I mean, you have the, I don't know, the opera house and... Australia, and you have the TWA terminal. I mean, they sort of exhausted that idea. You know, you can only go so far as, as a shape. there's one shape after another. And, you know, I like that shape. That's what becomes eventually. And I, I felt that way about sculpture. That's why I kind of, you know, I always say that Duchamp said that brilliant statement, like, if you're going to be creative, you have to clean off your desk at least three times. <laughs> and, uh, you know, that was one of the cleaning. I was like, I said, well, you know, you know, I'm doing good work, but... You know what is that? What's that? You know, I mean, good work is not in, really interesting. <laughs> so, so everything I've done, I've always kind of like looked at the situation and see is there some other way to think about it? Keep it very much the same as it is. Keep it like you're going to do a house, make it look very much like a house. You know, they, everybody knows it's a house. They know what the language of a house is. Keep enough of that so you keep the security of familiarity, and then just twist it some way. You know, move it some dumb direction or do something like that. But basically, that's that I think is the powerful, most powerful core, core idea. You, you said we shouldn't design constructivist buildings in our ecological age. And you define your intention as an architecture of idea, attitude, and context versus an architecture of form, space, and structure. And in one of your lectures, you even use Marcel Duchamp's quote, I am interested in ideas, not merely visual products. Uh, could you go into why you prefer to focus on these issues rather than on the most fundamental qualities of Well, the fundamental qualities are always Form, there. Form, space, and structure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's like Duchamp said, I'm not, a, you know, non-visual, or I'm, I'm a non-retinal, that's what he said. I'm non-retinal, I mean, you know, I'm not about making another painting with texture or color, I'm about looking at other ways to make art. <clears throat> and I feel the same way. I mean, all buildings are very physical. All buildings are functional, if they, if they work at all. All buildings are, are really cumbersome. You know, they really are. They're hard to do much of anything with. There's only such a very small range of things you're sort of allowed to do. So in a way, that's a challenge. I mean, how can you, you know, use a building to change people's attitudes toward buildings? do something to the building to make them rethink that kind of idiom or that kind of point of view. So that, that was what the idea, rather than just start out always with form, space, structure, you know, function, everything, all these. We all know that all buildings have to do those things, but that isn't the only thing they can do. I think that's what I'm really saying there. It's, a, it's just a different way of looking at it. And does that mean that uh, you are not concerned with how buildings look like? Well, no, I, I'm very concerned. I'm very much art, art oriented. <laughs> so, but yeah, about... I mean, but you can say that about Duchamp too. He, okay. he was very concerned with what things look like. I mean, you know, the, in fact, all of his last works were totally visual works. So, what would you say was the most. Uh, representable deconstructivist project that you've done? Well, the tilt building, I guess that would be the, that would be pretty much, that's pretty cut and dried. I mean, you're, you're really questioning equilibrium, you're really questioning construction, you're really questioning was the placement. Was the tilt the only 
um, change that you've done? Yeah, that, no, that was the only change to the building. But that's all. Yeah, that's all. But but you don't need anything else. <laughs> <laughs>